What's going on, y'all? So let's What's going on, y'all? So we are back again for the second part, which I believe is the final part of the Loving Hip Hop Miami reunion for season three. So we pick up what we left off last week with Trina going off on Nikki Natural. And till this day, like I said last week, Nikki Natural is delusional as fuck. When she said that shit in the back talking about some, you know, Trick and Trina ain't never put nobody on or whatever. I ain't never seen this and I ain't never seen that. I said, bitch, you's a goddamn lie. Okay, she been out here, you know, reaching out her hand to all these other people, whatever, whether or not they get put on or not it's not like trick or trina is the person especially trina will um you know deny a person or think that she better than somebody i've never seen that okay hell if that's the case she wouldn't be fucking around with sukiana and hoodbrack and chameleon like that okay so you know stop the bullshit you're delusional as fuck all right and you think that you have this way you deserve to be put on no, you don't. No, you don't. Not the way that your attitude is and the um, you, the lack of hum, humility that you don't have, okay? No. And Trick, I mean, Trina just going off or whatever. And I say this, given that I can't stand Dicky Natural, I have to give her her props because that bitch kept calm, cool, and collected. And the only reason why I, I have to give her that she did that is because she knew security was going to stop. That's it. And even then, she still didn't um, engage in the shit with Trick and Trina, you know, especially Trina going off or whatever. Trina, you let this little dumb bitch get underneath your damn skin and I'm so mad at that I'm so mad at that you let that girl get so fucking hot get you so fucking hot bitch when you could have touched her anytime when you before this show was on I'm just saying I'm just saying uh, to the point that you took off your clothes you going off on Kindle you know um you you didn't get into the car whatever you didn't change wardrobes and all that shit Bobby had to convince your ass to come back and I'm just sitting here like Trina calm down you you giving that little bitch too fucking much now that's gonna be on her little reptile she, she, she's taking this shit to her head. Like, that's going to boost her ego. I got under Trina's skin. Ha, ha, ha. Girl, no. Okay? No. So, they come back. Bobby come back. You know, they're talking about the whole thing. Um, Moving on from that whole situation. They get into talking about uh the tour that Sukiana, Brianna, uh, Brianna, Sukiana, Hoodbrat, and Chameleon went on. And, you know, the whole thing with Alvin and how... Uh, they had them up in this Moch Motel and how uh, Roach Motel or whatever and how when they did say to Alvin that what type of hotel that they wanted, he basically was saying like, y'all ain't nobody or whatever. And it was like, it's not even about who the fuck we think we are. It's about what we accommodated to and what we're used to. Okay. Um, and truth be told, even if they wasn't the biggest stars or whatever and put in the effort, don't nobody want to stay in no shit like that, okay? You may want to stay at some um, raggedy ass shit, bitch, but if I come from that, that don't mean that I want to go back to that shit. No, you could have went to a Holiday Inn Express, okay, bitch? You could have went to something like that, you know what I'm saying? A Ramada Inn, you know? Beyonce told us that, bitch, why she up in the five stars, we up in Ramada Inn, bitch. That's cute, you know what I'm saying? You could have went there. You know what I'm saying? What's going on? All right. Sometimes um, it'd be like one twenty nine a month. I mean, a, a day. You're only saying that for one night. And then you had them all in one room and you had yourself in the room yourself. And bitch, when Sukiyana said that motherfucker took a shit in the toilet and he did not wipe himself because she did not see no tissue in the bathroom. I said, what the fuck? So you walking around with itchy booty. You walking around with smelly itchy booty and you are get. I don't want to be like that. I don't want to be like that because that's my community. But, baby, you gay, and I'm pretty sure you're a bottom. That does not go. That does not go. And I know you didn't get no dick that night, okay? I just had to put that out there. I really just had to put that out there. You are a disgrace, if that is true. Moving on from that, they start talking about how, you know, they went into the performance and they went on ahead and got their shit done. Um, you know, Bucky and Sukiyana got into it about the whole situation with Trina and Nikki Natural, because Nikki Natural was like, you know, I mean, uh, Bucky was like, you know, I can understand where Nikki is coming from, and I can understand where Trina is coming from, because, you know, when people coming at you, and then Sookie was like, bitch, I wasn't even trying to come at the girl, and then they get into their whole beef about how their situation happened. She was like, bitch, I wasn't trying to come at you the way that you thought I was trying to come at you, and it just went that way. It was like misunderstanding and all this stuff, and woo, 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 and I'm like... 
Girl, just shut the fuck up. Both of y'all just shut up, okay? Just shut up because y'all both was coming at each other. And granted, you should have shut your mouth up. And you should have just let the situation play out. You sitting up here, Bucky, talking about some, you know, they grown women or whatever. They don't need nobody to jump in and handle their situation. But that's exactly what you did when you first encountered the issue that was going on between Nikki and Sukiana. You jumped in trying to defuse the situation like you just said. That's that's according to you. But you just jumped in, Okay. If they having an issue, let them have that issue. You ain't have to say nothing. But then, like they said, but you ain't jump in when your homegirl was getting chewed out by Trina. You ain't say nothing then, but you was on her lives and stuff like that. So, what's the difference? You know, it's kind of, okay, we sad that we on. Okay, we gonna say one thing and do another. That's what it was coming off as. And I was just like, be quiet, be quiet. But then they start getting into this whole thing about the N-word, you know, and... Uh, I, I got bored with it. I got bored with it because I am so tired of hearing this. I'm so tired of hearing this. And I'm sorry. It's something that still goes on. Listen, I don't give a damn. I don't give a damn if a person puts a black person, a black person of African descent, put in their um song, they say nigga, they say nigga, I say nigga, bitch, just because you are white and it's because it's in a song or you're any other culture, any other race, any other ethnicity, any other nationality, bitch, if you are not fucking black, don't say the fucking word. You know how to censor your fucking self and you know the consequences of what would happen if you're around the right motherfucker and they hear you say that shit. If you want to say that word, you better say that word in the privacy of your own motherfucking home. But if you're around motherfuckers that look like me and that look like my skin folk and my skin folk, bitch, you better shut the fuck up on that shit okay that's all that it is and then that white man that said well i use nigga all the time girl they should have whooped his ass okay but they won he tried it because it was just a lot of females that's what it was you know what i'm saying granted old girl was drunk and she said she was how coke or whatever repeating the, the lyrics you can still censor yourself and i've seen it be done i've seen it be done plenty of times okay so can we stop and if a person want to use the word they can use the word that's black okay yes it's, we shouldn't use the word, but that's just not going to happen. And like Bucky said, it's up to you to do what you want to do with your platform and put it out there. Tip, if you don't want the word to be used, don't use it. That's what it is. That's your platform, okay? Girl, I'm so tired of hearing about that. Because people, I think, when they bring up certain situations and certain topics like, you know, the N-word debate or whatever, that's gaslighting. It really is. It really is. And, of course, they asked Amara her opinion about the word, and she said she don't even use the word because a lot of people feel like she can't use the word or whatever because, you know, she's Latina, but, you know, she's black skin, or I should say she has a darker hue on her skin or whatever. She's an Afro-Latina, and she grew up in a project. She grew up around black people. She grew up around Latinos, and she give her whole struggle and all that stuff, and she just apologized if she ever offended by anybody, you know? So that's all I can say on that. So then we get on to Briscoe. Okay, we bring Cello out and, um, you know, they start talking about their relationship and how, you know, he was messing up and when he found, telling us about what he did, his credit card fraud and, you know, being Briscoe, his um, face and everything is on Billboard. So he felt like he had this image to uphold or whatever. And, um, you know, Cello was just saying how when she found out what he was going to jail for or whatever, um, I got to stop saying whatever. Uh, you know, she was just shocked because that wasn't him. You know, he was a smaller dude or whatever. And now he doing all this stuff and he coming out, he doing a little bit better. They working on their relationship and everything. And it's all to the good. Okay. They trying to get into the sack and, um, you know, get this thing right. You know, they, they asked him what he missed being in prison. I missed the touch and the whole double woman. You know what I'm saying? I said, that's it. What about your kids? They mentioned the kids too. And I was like, oh, okay. Cause you know, he was like, he felt like he abandoned, he grew up. I, I think he said he grew up without a father, but he felt like he um, did the same thing to his kids by abandoning them, by being put to jail because he was gone on a five year bid, but he got out in three and a half years. So, you know, he feels a way about that, beating himself up over that. And I was like, okay, at least you understand that that's what you did, you know? And then backstage with Kendall, here come Chameleon talking about some. He was like, what you feel about what he's saying? I mean, I'm listening to all the bullshit that he talking, a bunch of lies and stuff. I mean, I got some shit that I got to say, but, you know, I'm saving. It was like, okay, yeah, we're going to bring you out there to the front. So at this point, this is when Claudia was like, okay, well, 
since you talking about this getting back together with your um boo and all this stuff and you you know a changed person and she feel like you a changed person what about this because it did seem like that um cello was the only person that you were trying to make nice with you was up there catching the eye of other people too and i was like wait a minute what is this girl they showed the whole ass clip of him kissing on um chameleon bitch let me tell you something when he put his hand on her throat and he choked her a little bit i said hold up <laughs> <laughs> girl let me choke somebody i want to uh let me tell you something being choked and you choking somebody girl quarantine fucking the game up okay my 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 dm's been dry as fuck y'all like bitch ain't getting been no play but anyway but let me tell you something if you know how to do it right that shit I should have get you right. Okay. But, girl, I was like, uh-uh, what is this? They was kissing and all that shit. They just sent Ch um, Chameleon out there or whatever. And they was like, Kendall was like, did you use protection or something? She paused like it was a pregnant pause. I said, uh-uh, hold up. Come on. Come on. Cello pissed off. What the fuck is this, bitch? What the fuck is this? I said, yes. Be his ass. Don't be hers. Okay? Because he knew what the fuck was going on. I said, oh. And then when they got Cello down, or whatever got her off the stage or whatever it was like did anything else go down with this he was like of course and i was like damn briscoe i was rooting for you you still fucked up shit so um briscoe baby was out here fucking okay that's what he was he was out here fucking and telling lies okay chameleon comes out there and basically said you know um uh, i did not know that they were still together like that but i knew of cello okay and oh her name is my mama name too you know michelle that's her real name but she was like i asked what is the situation going on with you and her you know so because she's like i'm not no be gonna be no motherfucker that's coming in fucking around with no nigga who's already in a relationship and he was just feeding them lies talking about some you know he just there trying to keep the peace or whatever you know for the kids and all that shit and then tip said bitch he told me the same damn thing i said so you was fucking around with chameleon and tip god damn briscoe fuck and then chameleon said her period didn't come girl i said ain't this about some shit briscoe trying to talk to shello shello like listen nigga you ain't gotta say shit about me you ain't gotta say nothing to me because listen you know at the end of the day when he go through all his bullshit and he fuck up i'm always there i'm always there to understand and to be there for them and i'm just tired of just being there and not getting that shit reciprocated okay i'm not getting nothing i'm not mad i'm disappointed and no i'm not hurt i'm disappointed because you're being fucking irresponsible and that's what the fuck it is and then kendall was like so bitch at the end of the day are you gonna take this nigga back she gonna take him back even though she said no because that's the pattern now when you ready and i don't feel like she ready to break that pattern yet okay i mean prove me wrong shallow because you do deserve better if this is the situation that's going on you do deserve better um, uh, a nigga literally embarrassed you on national TV, it was feeding us all this bullshit, and then come to reunion, this nigga ain't shit, girl, Briscoe, you still, you still one of my favorites, but since you nigga, I know that you ain't shit, I'm, I'm gonna treat you like an ain't shit nigga, okay, that got certain type of qualities that I can, I can fuck with, but either way, you still ain't shit, okay, moving on from that, they get onto the whole thing about, um, Trick Daddy and his health, and, you know, Trina comes back out, and, um, you know, he was saying he ain't changed his diet. He ain't changed nothing or whatever. He's been doing the same thing that he's been doing for the past 14, 15 years, okay? He got a little bit of high blood pressure. And like they were saying, stuff like this can be reversed, okay? And I'm not saying that lupus can be reversed because I don't believe that it can. But, you know, stuff like um, a certain type of diabetes can be reversed if you, you know, eat healthier, if you exercise and stuff like that. High blood pressure can definitely be reversed if you do the right things, change your diet and all that stuff. And that's all they're trying to get at, you know. And Joy, when she was saying um, how, yeah, I understand you don't want to look at this way and you don't want to do it this way. You know, if you don't want to do the medicine that they are prescribing, you know, why not try to do an alternative route and go through the natural remedies route or whatever. You know, he don't want to do anything. He's so stuck in his ways. You know, the only thing that he said that he got rid of doing is bunk, which is um cocaine and weed at the same time. Smoking weed laced with cocaine. Okay. He's done with that. He smoked regular weed. He got a marijuana card, a medical marijuana 
want a car. But see, that that don't make it no better. If you are, you know, out here still living a foul lifestyle, you know, it's not going to make it no better. Trust and believe me. I'm a fat bitch. I know. <laughs> I gotta stop getting on this camera reading myself, okay? Cause I am disappointed in myself, y'all. Let me tell you something. Ever since I've been home, I ain't, I ain't exercise. I'm, I'm just tell you this. I ain't exercise. I ain't really been eating much like that. But um, the stuff that I have been eating, it probably ain't worth it. But um, girl, listen, girl, I gotta read myself down. Now, I'm gonna talk about somebody else. I gotta read myself down, okay? Bitch, you fucking up, okay? You need to get your ass on the bike. You know, truth be told, I could go and do it tonight, but I ain't even gonna lie and say that I am. I do it tomorrow, okay? I do it tomorrow and I report back. But uh, anyway, you know, you got to get yourself back on track. And they get, he said to Bobby, see, bitch, you like um, hot dogs. I like mermaids. Meaning he like, he like dick and trick like pussy. Okay, that's what it is. <laughs> But anyway, you know, they started talking about um, Joy and his relationship and where they're going and how they always just looking at each other on the couch and everything. And Trina, like, you know, they're good together. They're not good together. They're not good to apart. They're like real best friends that kind of hate each other at the same time, you know. But um, they working on that situation. It was like, you know, at the... At the moment, they keep on getting together and things keep getting better and better. They got to get to know each other more. And they was like, Trick, what is one of the things that you are really sorry for doing to, um, you know, um, Joy? He was like, paying all that money for that wedding. If I knew it was going to turn out the way that it turned out, that's how I knew that, you know, this wasn't going to be easy. They said, bitch, a fight broke out at the wedding. It was like 50 police cars out there plus helicopters and shit. God damn. Okay. That was an omen right there. <laughs> But, you know, Trick gonna be Trick, you know, and I really do hope it do work out between him and Joy. Like, he finally gets it into his, in his mind that he needs to change, at least look for some alternative route that's more healthier, you know what I'm saying, and, and take the simple steps. But, you know, he's an older man, so they, old people stuck in their ways. That's all it is, and he's a man, and they stuck in their ways. There you go. So then they get into talking about Hood Brat and her um situation with her sister and her uh nieces and nephew. And, you know, how, um, you know, she's still out here trying to do what she got to do for her nieces and nephew. They still live with her older sister. Um, and she was like, we all can't struggle, whatever. And everybody else started giving their inputs about whatever from Trick Daddy was saying, you know, that her and Hood Brad grew up in the same projects. Uh, well, him and Hood Brad grew up in the same projects. And, um, you know, he always had a struggle, I mean, a hustle because his mama had 10 baby daddies. Okay. I said, and did you hear somebody say, damn. <laughs> <laughs> anytime I hear somebody go damn like that it takes me out but um yeah it was like you know he always had a hustle to um you know because you got to survive somehow okay so Kiana was talking about how you know um she came from food stamps and you know she just thank god that she was blessed to be able to get up on stage to talk about her vagina Okay, and to make her money or whatever, girl, they asked Nikki Natural, bitch, how you feel because you know, um, you got kids or whatever. She was like, yes, all my kids have uh different fathers, but you know, their fathers are in their lives, so they don't have to ask for much, and I don't have to go through that struggle. <laughs> And Bobby was like, damn, bitch, what she basically said is, bitch, I don't know that struggle, so don't put that on me. Um, She was like, no, no, no. I was like, yes, that's basically what you're trying to do. You're trying to stun a little bit, but okay, I get it. But if you if it ain't your struggle, it ain't your struggle. You know what I'm saying? So um, people got different stories. Some people got Debbie, De baby daddies, and some people got baby daddies that's all the way up in their life, you know? And so um, um, they was asking if Hood Brad and Kenny going to be working out and... You know, she said it's critical. She don't know what's going on really with the baby mama and him. And, you know, they was like, did he get a divorce? Here goes Trey Daddy. Um, Bobby, Bobby, could you let the host ask the question? I'm so glad that Trick said that because Bobby has been getting on my nerves a little bit with all his interjections and stuff like that. And he was like, where Joy at? Where Joy at? Because I see what you're trying to do. You up here trying to flirt with Claudia and all that stuff and woo, woo, woo. But it was all in fun and jazz. So, yeah. They get to talking about Suki and her being a mother. Do you miss it? I mean, well, not miss it. Do it, you know, her struggle between trying to get her um, dream out to be this superstar to become a superstar and um, being a mother. And she said now she has her kids. They live with her. 
and they always be in there for her. She's always there for her, um, for her kids. And, you know, she do whatever she got to do for her kids. So her kids won't want for anything. You know, um, she loves her job. She don't feel bad when she have to go because she's the one paying the bills and she making sure that her children are okay. She do their homework with her or with them or whatever. Um, she said, bitch, it came to a time where she got fired from, I think it was Popeye's, but they bleeped it out, you know, for stealing all the goddamn chicken or whatever to take it home to the kids. And now she on the stage doing what she doing now, getting paid to talk about pussy and all that shit. So she all to the good, you know, then they get it to girl. They said, you know, when Snooki be around her kids or whatever, she know how to tighten it up or whatever. Trick said, listen, I had a conversation with her a couple of times off the scene or whatever, just a one-on-one, and I didn't know the bitch had brains and was that smart like that. I said, wait a minute. Hey, hey, sometimes you got to, um, you got, you can't judge a book by its cover. That's what that is, okay? Because some of these girls, some of these guys or whatever, they can be the hoodest motherfucker out here, the vocabulary be off the chain or whatever, and then and all of a sudden, you realize that they smart as shit, okay? It's just because they sound different and they look different and they probably act different. They act, they don't act what and, and, and what society deems an intelligent person be. Now, I ain't putting all that on Sookie, but I'm just saying it happens. It happens, you know? And um, so they was talking about the brown skin girl lunch, um, brunch, whatever, why Nikki Natural wasn't there. Now, see... First of all, they was talking about how we all go through the same things and we need to be there to uplift one another and all this shit. And as soon as they mentioned Nikki Natural, um, you know, Sookie said the bitch was a hoe. So that's why. Because she was always fucking on Trick Daddy and it is what it is, okay? Fuck that bitch. Her energy. I said, girl, now we just said that we all go through the same thing and we need to uplift one another. But you said, fuck that bitch, okay? Nikki, girl, whatever, whatever. It's all fake news. It's fake as fuck. And that's why I don't care that I wasn't there or whatever. You know, I'm the queen sitting here doing this, doing that. Okay, girl, if that's how you feel. But at the end of the day, what Sookie should have said is, I just didn't vibe with her energy. And every time I had been around her, if she could have got the words out instead of going so gutter, you know, and, and calling the girl out her name and shit like that was, you know, she just was not on the same tip as us, you know, less in less negativity. It would have been some more negative shit that would have popped out. And why would I invite? And I said, Claudia, bitch, why the fuck would she invite somebody that she got into it with and didn't even make up with yet? Girl, come on. I mean, she ripped the bitch wig off. Okay, come on. That ain't even gonna happen. Um, moving on on that, they was talking about uh, a fan question about is it difficult to deal with Suki when she took tip? Is it difficult to manage her when um you know she's focused on getting lit? Tip said no. She know her limits. She know what to do. You know she know how she get there and all that stuff. And um, Suki was like. Listen, listen, I, I, it is what it is with me. You know, niggas love me or whatever because they love this. You know, bitches from the project got the best puss or whatever. Here you go, Claudia. Hold up, hold up. It ain't just, it ain't just women from the project that got the best puss. I said, girl, don't nobody need to know that. Nobody need to know that. We need to know that. Okay, we need to know it from Suki. We need to know it from you. But that's cute. That's cute. To be quite honest, I'm actually liking how Claudia Jordan is interacting more so with the cast and, um, you know, being a little bit more down to earth with it, you know, a little looser than Nina is. Yeah, is that me? Hmm. And then they go around at the end to talk about what everybody came from, you know, being on Love and Hip Hop and everybody just thankful for being on there and apologizing if they need to apologize. And, you know, Shay and her brother, I love you, brother, but you need to get your shit together. And he was like, I love you too. And then here come Amada, I love you too, bitch. And she was like, I love you too, bitch. Okay, they gonna be cool. They fine or whatever the fuck. And then Kendall was, you know, they asked him, Kendall, what he think about the hair situation. Because remember when Stevie J, I don't know if y'all seen it on the blogs, but Stevie J, did come at them about their hair or whatever and so there you go that's why that situation was brought up but other than that that was loving hip-hop miami that's the season y'all tell me how y'all felt about this reunion and i will see you guys later peace